Every now and again, it's good to look back. And when I say look back, I'm not talking about admiring your old sinful ways or reminiscing about the ungodly things you used to do. No, I'm encouraging you to remember. Remember how far God has taken you from. Remember how many battles you came through when you know good and well that it wasn't by your strength. Remember how the Lord has loved you and comforted you, even when friends betrayed you. Look back and remember how God's hand was over your life and things should have fallen apart for you, but they didn't. Yes, every now and again, all of us ought to take a moment and remember. Remember all that God has done, because it's easy to forget what God has done for us, especially when we face challenging times or become preoccupied with our daily routines. But do you know why it's important to look back? It's important because you will begin to see how faithful God has been time after time. You'll begin to see how God has watched over you and opened doors for you time after time. When we reflect on the significant events and moments in our lives, we can recognize how God has been with us every step of the way. This is emphasized in Psalm 77, verses 11 through 12, where the Bible reads, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. This verse reminds us that God's works in the past are worthy of our reflection and meditation. By focusing on God's faithfulness in the past, we can gain confidence in His promises for the future. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 8.28, And we know for those that love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Secondly, remembering the past helps us be grateful for what we have. When we look back and see how God has provided for us, protected us, and guided us, we can develop a heart of gratitude. And God certainly loves a thankful heart. When we are filled with thanksgiving and gratitude, this helps us to focus on God's blessings rather than our difficulties. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Note how Paul said, with thanksgiving, meaning it's an essential component if we want our requests to be heard by God. By being thankful, we develop a deeper relationship with God, recognizing Him as the source of our blessings. A Puritan preacher by the name of Thomas Watson once said, Remembering the mercies of God breeds gratitude in our hearts. In addition to this, remembering the past helps us to share our testimony with others. Our personal testimonies are powerful tools for evangelism and can inspire others to seek God. As we reflect on what God has done in our lives, we can share our experiences with others, showing them how God has transformed us and guided us. In conclusion, I'd like to quote the words of a Christian theologian by the name of J.I. Packer, who said, the past is a source of knowledge, and the future is a source of hope. Love of the past implies faith in the future. I want to share something with you. I have seen many people walk in and out of my life. Some came, and they were a blessing. Some came, <laughs> and they were a challenge. I've met people who I thought would be in my life for many, many years. But sadly, and often unexpectedly, they walked away. However, I have also met a handful of people who, to my surprise, became my encouragers. They were my teammates in the things of God. However, for one reason or another, they came for a season. They served their purpose. But then life careers, ambitions, callings, they took us in different directions. However, out of all the people we will ever come across in life, there is only one 
who will never disappoint us. There is only one who can satisfy our soul's deepest needs. There is only one who has ever uttered the words, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and was able to keep the promise. His name is Jesus Christ. There is none like him. There is none who can rival him. There is none on earth or any person who has ever lived who can come close to Jesus Christ. He loves with an unconditional love. He speaks with unmatchable wisdom. He is the good shepherd and his presence. It casts out all fear. All unclean things and anxiety have to leave. His presence heals. It renews and it restores. At the sound of his name, Demons tremble. On this earth, miracles happen. Healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, unstopping deaf ears. All those are a part of his resume. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so, dear friend, when you open your heart and embrace all that Jesus Christ has to offer, this will impact your life. This decision is the one that will radically transform your life if you really surrender and embrace the Lord. Not only does he bring eternal life, but in this present day here on this earth, if you truly surrender to Jesus Christ, he's able to bring you joy. And how many of us could do with a little more joy in our lives? Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. When Jesus Christ comes into your heart, he brings joy. And you will discover that joy is ever present in your darkest hour. Joy is ever present in the midst of chaos. And that is simply because Jesus Christ is the source of joy. So, I ask you, dear friends, have you invited the Lord into your heart? Have you embraced him? Have you met the one who can offer amazing grace? Have you met the one who can heal your deepest scars? Have you met the one who raised Lazarus from the dead? If you haven't met him, you can You can accept him in your life today, and he will come into your heart. He is the one who can renew, he can restore, he can rejuvenate. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is waiting for you to seek him. Now, there may be someone who has gotten to the point where you are so low that you think God has forgotten you. There may be someone who finds themselves today at a point of uncertainty. You don't know whether to turn left or right. You don't know whether to cry or smile. And regarding whatever it is that's making you feel this way, if it's sin, if it's addiction, if it's your marriage, or if it's the fact that you can't seem to find someone to marry, if it's your job or financial situation, I want to encourage you to pray about it. Pray about it before you give up. Pray about it before you look anywhere else. Pray about it before you look to anyone else. And the reason I'm telling you to pray about it is because too often when we find ourselves In these certain positions, we either drift away and get lost in the sea of our problems, or we start paddling trying to find a way out of our problems. We start trying to use our own strength to get out of the messes we're in. We do our best to use our resources and know-how just to try to save ourselves. But I would like to encourage you to pray about it. Call on the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Pray about it and call on the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
What do you do when everything seemingly puts up a fight against you? When everything seems like a struggle? Have you ever had that feeling where every time you think you're on the right track or on the right path, here comes something, here comes temptation, here comes sin trying to derail you and knock you off the right path? Have you ever had one of those days where it's just a fight? Where everything is a fight. Your journey to work seems like it's a struggle. You get to work and it's hostile that day. You get home and something unexpected happens. An unexpected letter, an unexpected bill. I've had days where I've been strong. Days where I feel as though I can mount up with wings like an eagle. Days where I'd pray and feel as though I could touch the gates of heaven. 10 minutes would go by, 20 minutes would go by, and it would still feel as though I'm just getting started. These are the days I feel like a giant slayer. I feel empowered by the Holy Spirit. But then there are other days. Days where if I try to pray, it feels like I'm next to a brick wall and my words just keep bouncing off and going nowhere. Have you ever had a day where everything is a struggle? It's a fight? You try to read the word, but that becomes a fight. You try and pray, but that too proves to be a fight. You put some worship music on, but you're still fighting. What do you do? There are days where I feel as though surely God cannot forgive me again. You know the kind of days where you feel weighted down. You feel as though sin has left a stain, a mark on you that can't be removed. Yes, I've been through days where I felt as though God wouldn't want to save someone like me with all my issues and the sin I struggle with. I believe that David experienced days like this quite often. He must have. Because if you read Psalm 18, verse 6, the Bible says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cry for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. That's a man who's been going through things. David goes on further in Psalm 27, verse 7, and says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. And the question I always had was, why is David crying to God so much? Why is it that so often in the Psalms, David speaks of crying out to the Lord? But as I grew in maturity, as I grew in understanding, it became clear to me that many of us, like David, will face things beyond our ability to solve. We will face situations that we can do nothing about except to simply try and endure. And it's this issue of struggling with sin that I want to talk about. I'm glad that the Bible says in Romans 7 and 15, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And then Romans 7, verse 18 and 19 says, For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. It's astonishing that the Apostle Paul, Paul, a servant of the Lord, a man who God performed miracles through, he is opening up about this struggle with sin. The same struggle with sin that I face. He must have had his good days. Days when he was strong and could cast out demons in the name of Jesus or lay hands on the sick and heal them. But this very same Paul also had bad days where he felt like he took one step forward and two steps back. But here's the thing. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For the righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. You see, though we struggle with sin, we can only overcome in Jesus. Though we fall, we can only get back up with the help of the Lord. 
Though we may indeed stumble, it is in Jesus that we have steady ground.